<sighs> Makes some less energy. wild and it gives it an experience that you get nowhere else in the United States. This is a big wild mountain. It has black, deep, dark forest. A lot of slippery stuff, a lot of creeks, a lot of roots, off camber, steep up, steep down. You're on a big mountain on the Montana-Idaho border of the beginning of a true wilderness. The weather consistently changes at the top of the mountain. It can be sunny one minute and raining or foggy the next. There's some external forces on this mountain this weekend. We've had like record amount of rain. Snow is still here. It's like a 50-50 chance you might die out there. So the race here at Silver Mountain is super gnarly. It's on a ski mountain. So we have big, steep hills with massive exposure giant talus piles, big creeks, massive hill climbs, and there's roots, rocks, and mud mixed into all of it. Round six of the AMA IRC US Hard Enduro Series, presented by Inside Enduro, is a battle for the throne of Silver Mountain. Sunday's version of the course is gonna be US's version of Romaniacs. So there's gold, silver, bronze lines. The gold lines are gonna be for real. When there's a gold sign on the tree, you better be expecting something big. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a, a man's man's world out there this weekend. We don't really know what's in front of us because you can't physically walk everything on this course with a huge elevation, gains and losses. The format for this race is going to be pretty intense. Four to six hours probably on the bike, all new terrain. So managing your race is going to be key. A race like this, where you're away from the pits, up on the mountain all day, you gotta bring everything with you. You gotta be completely self-sufficient. So if you want gels, if you want water, if you need fuel, you gotta pack it with you. So preparation is key. So on Sunday, we have a six hour race starting at 9 a.m. It's gonna be Romaniac style, gonna be one of the gnarliest races all year. So far through the season, Tristan Hart and Ryder LeBlanc have secured themselves as the top two riders in the series. They're off at Erzberg right now trying to prove themselves on a world stage. So there's a couple open spots on the top two steps of the podium, and we have some wild cards that are going to show up, so it might be a good race. Definitely some more chances to get up on that podium, I and mean, I'm going to be going for it. All the racers are going to be gunning for those podium spots. If the hunger is there, the determination is there, people can rise to the occasion. I asked him who he was and he looked at me kind of funny. I said, you're Colton F. and Haker. Do it. It's time. Set an example. You can do it. I think going into this, Keith and Colton are kind of those two guys that everybody thinks going for the crown. It's going to come down to a battle. He's going to have the most grit, toughness, want, desire. He has the win in him. He just has to do it. He set out to conquer Silver Mountain. The man with grit will be the man who becomes the Silver King. With $10,000 going to the Silver King, over 400 competitors are looking to strike it rich at the Silver King's Hard Enduro. Keith is gonna be really good here in this type of terrain. I think uh, Keith's gonna be tough. I see Colton and I having some pretty fierce battles throughout this race, for sure. There's probably gonna be some back and forth. Colton's quicker than me in certain sections. I can maybe navigate my way through certain terrain better than he can. 
Keith's known for his hill climbing and just being a dog and brooding up stuff, so I think this is going to be his race. I've won this race a couple times in the past, and I'm just really looking forward to hammering down. I'm here to take home the King title. Excitement builds for this highly anticipated event. Inside Enduro kicks off the three-day weekend with a party as grand as the mountain itself. A lot of the inspiration has been taken from the major European races. We've taken the idea of a parade through town. It's kind of a neat way to bring all the bikes together and the excitement that we're getting ready to do something grand. a feeling, the smell of two-stroke in the air, maybe a little burnt rubber, a few wheelies, maybe a few tip-overs. It's pretty exciting. I am a boss and I act like one. Walk and I talk and I stack like one. When I say one, I mean a whole lot one. They know what to call me when I walk in a door. I am what you wish for. Yeah, I'm a boss and I ball like a crystal. When you see the dirt bikes come together, it just brings a, a real energy. The town loves it. It's nice to have some acknowledgement and some fanfare and a little lighthearted fun. Prologue's a couple miles long. We have some big hill climbs, steep descents, and that will determine our gate pick for Sunday. You don't want to waste too much energy and take some out from uh, the main race Sunday, because that's what really counts. As long as I get top five from the prologue, I'm going to be content. That's really we're going to make some time right away off the get-go. Wave one of the pros attacks the Enduro Cross course with a commanding pace. Everyone fighting for a front position. But an early mistake sends Cooper to the ground. The competitors quickly dodge the fallen rider. With a quick recovery, he's back on two wheels and enters the dense forest. Here comes our second line of pros off the prologue. We got Tim up hole on the beta out front trying to catch the first row. He wants that good starting position. Snow drifts are one of the first obstacles they face. Keith and Colton battle for the lead. Cooper passes aggressively to make up for lost time. And now the pros are just starting to come into the most difficult hill on the course. Keith's kind of a mountain man, so um, I think this particular race, new promoter, a lot of new course, I think he's going to be tough. Hard grow being at a ski resort. There's a lot of elevation change and uh, a lot of steep up and steep down. Going up should be fun. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of pushing, so uh, we'll see who can get to the top of those hills first. The amateurs, from A-riders to locals to women and youth, 
all want to test their fate on Silver Mountain. This quest is not for the faint of heart. This is the final ascent hill. We have a battle for the lead right here, right now. Super Avatar front, Keith Curtis is fighting for that second position. Trying to work his way to that top position. The Kill a pull has worked his way up to the second row. He's right there. Here's the win for the morning prologue with Tim and Colton close behind. The Montana boy Keith Curtis went out there and cleaned up on round one of the hot lap of the prologue. So we'll see what he can do with the now wet conditions. Can he go out there and put that thing on repeat and get her done again? We'll find out. Colton and I were just course walking today, but once the helmets are on, I mean, it's, it's game on. We're both going for the win. Keith and I have a pretty high respect for one another. Uh, he's a multi-time champion in, in snowmobiling and hill climbing and snowmobiles, and then I'm a multi-time champion in indoor enduro. So we're good buddies, we're both dads. I mean, level of respect with Keith is way up there, and uh, hopefully we can have a good battle, but hopefully I can come out on top. All the top pros are lined up for the Fundero Prologue and ready to go get their game position for tomorrow morning. Let's do it. With clear afternoon skies, the pros will now complete two laps to determine their gate position for Sunday. Danny Lewis charges off the platform. Spencer Wilton doubles the logs, but brake checks and crashes. Snowmobile pro Keith Curtis fights his way through a deep snow drift, keeping his momentum. But Arizona based Cooper Abbott gets stuck in an existing rut and loses a position to Dustin McCarthy. Okay, lock one of the Fundero Prologue. We got Tim O'Pole going for it. He's the one that nailed this climb on the first lap around. Looks like he's putting this thing on repeat. Colton Hager is close in tow and Gordon the Thunder right behind. It's absolute chaos. The danger is incredibly high. You have to be on your toes at all points, but also find that fine line between pushing yourself and being safe at the same time. Oh, Benny! Benny blows it. High side down the hill is exactly what you do not want to do. What makes this hill tricky is the talus pile at the bottom. It pulls all your drive away so you don't have any momentum going up. And if you don't get a good clean run through the talus, it's gonna make the grassy part up here a lot more challenging. Keith Curtis is coming into the LeBlanc climb here. He went from fourth to first in one lap. Right up through the middle, lugging it. Straight to the top. The guy is a pro. Colton Haker's at a close second. He's gonna take the more used right side line. I kind of had to wear myself out too much, but I couldn't help but to go hard. Everyone thinks I'm the quiet guy, but out on the course, I really like to show like that I'm here to party made it up this hill one shot clean. I mean, I got a little hung up at the top, but the best that anyone's made it all day, so I was stoked on that. Holy shit! Oh, uh, Cooper on lap two here. He is charging like this is the last race that he's ever gonna get to race. He wants that good start position bad. Our goal of Silver Kings is to not only test the top professionals, but more importantly, provide mountain adventure experience for the average weekend rider. The amateurs are the heart of the sport. They're the lion's share of the competitors. Yes, they'll be challenged, they will be dirty, they will be tired, but most of them will get through it. 
if they have the desire to get through it. And now it's starting to rain, so the elements and the factors are all amplified as the race wears on and desperation heightens. We have riders going out wide, trying to find more new lines to work their way up this hill. With the fun duro complete, riders prepare for the challenges of tomorrow's race, soon to find out what the mountain has in store for them. For the winner to take home the shield and the sword, it's gonna take a relentless attack on this mountain. With the fog's rolling in, it rained a little bit, conditions are getting worse and slippery, so it should be interesting. Here we are at the start. All the top guys are lined up and ready to go. It's gonna be a massive day with so many different elements and factors. We can't wait to see these guys attack this far. Let's do it. Hey! Garza faces an unfortunate early setback. Every 30 seconds, five more riders enter the Enduro Cross course. Cooper stays close to Colton, attempting to hold his position. When he falls back and Tim O'Hall makes the pass. Off to an early lead, Keith Curtis out front. Colton Haker, Tim Apole, who was hauling the ass yesterday, and Cooper Abbott. Colton wants to stay behind Keith and learn a little bit. All these guys are just feeling the terrain and each other out right now. They want to see how hard each other are pushing and how this race is going to go down. David had some issues off the start. His bike didn't start or something. And now he's trying to catch back up to the lead group. He doesn't want to lose those guys just so that he can see their lines. An easy mistake gives David Garza his opening. Misjudging the slickness of the roots, Colton gets stuck. Each attempt to free himself only digs him deeper. Colton frees himself, but expends more energy to regain his position. Comes Keith to the bottom of Gondola Hill, getting ready to work his way all the way back up. He's got a sizable lead. This is where it starts. Curtis uses his hill climbing skills to navigate this relentless ascent. Okay, here comes Tim Paul at the bottom of Gondola Hill. A close second behind Keith Curtis at 29 minutes into the race. We're about halfway up, and this is where it gets really steep and technical. Hanker gets a serious pass and a good bit of momentum on Tim Apollo there. Yeah, dude. Colton catches up to Keith, putting pressure on the leader at the top of the climb. One of the gold lines is up the gondola, so super steep, intense, lots of shrubs, gonna be slippery. You're gonna see a lot of riders suck going up that. 
Cooper Abbott and David Garza decided to help each other up Gondola Hill. As this hill gets used more and more, the track is harder and harder to find. They're gonna do a little team effort and work their way up Gondola Hill. They wanna finish this race and they do not wanna blow all their energy. Cooper continues to charge up the mountain, burning valuable matches. Spencer Wilton makes steady progress up Gondola Hill, making a pass on Cooper. I was up there and I fell back down. Okay, Keith Curtis has just finished his first pro section. He went all the way down back up Gondola Hill, and now he's dropping into the mountain bike line. Keith looks super comfortable. He stretched out his lead a little bit, and he looks solid. Following Colton Hager into the mountain bike run, which is the start of the second gold loop. And Keith Curtis has about a five minute lead. This Idaho terrain is proving to be no easy feat. The smallest logs can be deceiving, sending the pros quickly to the ground. Sometimes when you're really stuck, you're questioning life and you're really like frustrated. You're like stuck on a two foot rock. It's just keeping you from going and you're like, what am I doing with my time right now? You. One thing I've learned over the years of racing these hard enduro events is how to fail. You know, they're the hardest races in the world and if you can't deal with that, I mean, you're not gonna come back. So it's part of it and sometimes you just gotta face it. Man. Take this. Gotcha. Go get him. All right, we got Keith Curtis dropping into Milo Creek on this super steep downhill. This takes a lot of skill to get down this, but he's no stranger to these mountains, so he's ready. For a gold class, we have the descent into Milo Creek and drop into a Jurassic boulder sized semi river. It's not horribly deep, but it really messes with the mind. This is a, one of the first really difficult spots in Milo Creek. He's got the water, he's got to cross the water and go up this ledge, and straight into a super slick log. No problem for Keith Curtis. And these guys will be jumping big rocks in pools of you know, one to two feet of rushing water. It's white, it's bubbling. You can't see the bottom. Keith stops for a second, he wants to pick his line that his line is solid moving forward so he doesn't have any second thoughts about the line he chooses. He's lining up this double step. He works the side hill next to the creek. He goes right into the top perfectly. Choose wisely, my friends, to get out of Milo Creek. We're an hour and 40 minutes into the race and Keith Curtis has established himself as the front runner today. Let's see if Colton's able to clean it up, put his trial skills to use and catch up on this last half of the course. When you have a short run up and limited traction, it makes it super difficult to get up stuff like this. Colton's gonna take his time and pick his line through this section just like Keith did. A little extra time spent picking your line the section instead of struggle your way up it. Uh, Colton made it up the first step but wasn't able to get the drive to get up the second one. So now he's gonna have to burn a little energy and work his way up that second ledge. Colton's the trials guy. Let's see if he can dig out of that pocket with some slippery slimy roots and get up that second step. No problem, super clean. The rest of the pros face their own challenges to get out of Milo Creek. Gary Osman, a local to North Idaho, is no stranger to this terrain.
tree fields are all different. Sometimes that rock just goes away and sometimes you actually get contraction. So momentum is really the only key to those free fields. Going up the free field is like a totally different technique. It's, it's not like being loose on the bike. It's more like try to tight the bike and give it full throttle and go up there. Tim Apol holds on to his third place position with an impressive climb through the Talus field. Danny Lewis working his way through this palace field. Now that there's been a little bit of rain and all the riders that went through here, it's super slick and it's making it a little bit more tricky. We have Tim Apol in third, way out there. David Garza in fourth. And Danny Lewis in fifth, all right here. All in the same talus field, trying to work their way up to podium position. I think with the shell rocks, just having good tire placement, knowing which rocks are going to move, trying to uh, aim towards those. Uh, I think if you go towards the one that slide, you're just going to keep sliding down the hill. So uh, try and find good lines, and also just try not to stop. Here comes Cooper Abbott. He looks absolutely phenomenal. Working his way through this scree field in sixth place. In a moment of desperation, James Flynn sends his bike up as fatigue sets in. Okay, we have more gold riders picking their way through the Talos field here, little by little. Nearing the end of this single lap race, riders push past their limits and dig deep to finish strong. With resounding confidence, Keith Curtis crosses the finish line with Colton just 38 seconds behind. Their siege on the mountain is over, and a new Silver King is crowned. It was always my goal to make it into the top five, and now I'm on the podium, so I'm stoked. Danny Lewis earns his career best with a solid top five finish. Being the youngest guy, it just makes it that much more fun to go out and beat the older guys. push ourselves over the limit all the time and your body has to be ready to take that, your mind has to be ready to take that. At the end of it all, the racers found that the greatest challenge was against the mountain itself. First, you must conquer the course and only then 
can you challenge each other? This race is definitely over the top. I mean, that's the way Inside Enduro does things. It's just world class. It's not just a race, it's an adventure.